Business. It is 10 minutes past seven. Well, there are more signs that the global economic crisis is hitting home. The number of Aussies out of work is far more than feared. You see, unemployment has jumped to 5.2% in February. That's its highest level in nearly four years. Just over 47,000 people joined the dole queue last month. It's only going to get worse. There are predictions of 7% unemployment by this time next year. All the experts were thinking it would be 5%, the jobless rate, so it's exceeding the expectations. Well, let's bring in our big guns of politics. Leader of Government Business, Anthony Albanese, and Shadow Treasurer, Joe Hockey. Gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Anthony, if I can, uh, I'll kick off with you. These figures are a little worse than expected. Do you think you've underestimated Australia's economic position? No, we uh, said, uh, we said very early that uh, Australia... Uh, wasn't immune from the impact of the uh, the global recession. Uh, unemployment, of course, has hit uh, 8% in Canada. It's hit 7% in the United States. It's hit above 6% in the UK. Uh, it is going to have an impact on Australia. That's why uh, we need to not sit back and watch. We need to get out there and, and why we put forward our economic stimulus package very early. Um, Joe, I was watching Question Time yesterday. You were getting a bit grumpy, stuck into the government because of this stimulus package, saying the first one hasn't worked. Koshy, I don't get grumpy. I'm, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, yeah, it hasn't He's worked. He's had a tough but, week. <clears throat> no, I haven't had a tough week. But look, it, it, you know what, Koshy, uh, I hate seeing wasted money. I just loathe it. And the cash splash before Christmas, and in fact, the money that's going out to people today is money that should be used for other purposes or it should be saved by the government for a, you know, a, a specific project that is going to create jobs. Uh, the most alarming point about yesterday's job figures is the surge in the number of women that are unemployed, far exceeding the number of men in those instances. And we're also seeing a large increase in the number of people who are looking for work and they're getting part-time work, which says that a lot of uh, people who have been stay-at-home mums uh, have a husband who is not getting as much work as he used to get, they're now out there looking for part-time work to try and maintain household income. And uh, these are concerning <laughs> figures, but you know what, Koshi? Uh, when we were elected in 1996, the unemployment rate was 8.4%. So uh, you can get it down, you can make it better. 5.2% uh, is, is terrible for those that have lost their jobs. Uh, but Australia started in a very good position going into this downturn. So, Anthony, if we, are we seeing, um, I guess, companies adapting to this? If we are seeing 55,000 part-time positions created last month, we're seeing executives at Holden now agreeing to a 10% to pay cut from May. Are we seeing some bosses doing their bit to save jobs and should we be seeing more? Well, we are certainly seeing some positive signs, but, but we should see more. Uh, we need to have uh, executives right across the board uh, respond in a, in a positive way. Um, but uh, to, to take up Joe's point about, uh, about uh, the $42 billion package, I mean, one third are about payments, but two thirds of the package is about infrastructure. The one third, the payments that have hit uh, this week and uh, will we'll support people this month are about providing that support, that stimulus to the economy uh, while they, the infrastructure projects come online. But we're seeing, um, last week I was in Adelaide uh, opening, a, uh, opening a, a, a factory that's building uh, asphalt. Um, it, uh, it's employing 80 people directly uh, at the Northern Expressway. Um, and uh, that uh, project, the Northern Expressway of Adelaide, will employ hundreds of people. Later today I'll be in Brisbane okay. uh, opening the first boom gate, right. which is also part of the package. Sure, 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 sure. OK, but, but unemployment is escalating faster than anyone predicted. So you've got to admit, Anthony, that that 7% prediction of unemployment at the end of the year is looking pretty wobbly. It's going to go higher than 7%. Would you admit that? Look, I, I, I tell you what I, what I would admit, which is that every person who loses their job is one too many. Uh, that's okay. what we need to do. Is Will to it strive. go higher than that's 7%? What, is that what you're starting what, to factor in now? What we're, what we're factoring in is doing everything that we can to stop any job loss. So we're about creating that stimulus through the payments that'll stimulate so you're not prepared to uh, retail. Admit it. 
Well, we're about doing, doing what we can um, across, uh, across the economy through a range of projects, through uh, the, the education uh, fund, of All course, right, will lead to, to job creation at that level. All right. Do you mind? I'll jump in and move on because we're obviously not going to get a direct answer on that question. Joe, I might get you to talk about this one too. And this is on, you know, whether the government should be doing something. We talked a lot yesterday about our health system and uh, we had viewers email, nurses in emailing us saying that, uh, yeah, because she's got a pile of them, that at, that at one of the major hospitals in Sydney, Royal North Shore, they were bringing soap to work yeah. because they'd run out of supplies. Now, then we were inundated with emails from other people around the state saying they had to bring in their own latex gloves, they had to bring in pillows, pens, you name it. Um, I'll ask Anthony a tick, but Joe, it's your turn. Do you think, in your opinion, it's time the federal government bites a bullet and takes over the responsibility for hospitals? Well, Mel, you can't replace one incompetent government with another incompetent government. It comes down to the fact you've got to put money into the system. You know, and this is why I get so angry about wasted money from any government, state or federal. That's why the cheques shouldn't be going out to people now. Uh, the money should be going into things like hospitals and where, where it is desperately needed. I mean, how can, how can we be in a, in a country where the government, the federal government, is borrowing money today to give cheques to people in Australia? Some of the most needy people are not getting any money in the mail today, and yet you've got hospitals where they can't pay the food bills, they can't pay for basic amenities. I mean, this is the stuff that drives me crazy uh, at the moment. And, you know, this is... Why, why would you be surprised? Well, um, and fair dinkum. Joe says it dri drives him crazy, but he voted for the package last year. The no, we didn't vote made, for this package. The payments we did that not were made vote in December, it. which is what he's talking about, that he says didn't make a difference, were payments okay. to pensioners, to carers, to veterans. OK. Hang on. You Fix can't the have we're, we're actually to, and Anthony, on to... Anthony, we're talking about hospitals here, about nurses having to bring their own soap to wash patients in intensive care because there's no these are intensive care patients there's no soap to, to wash them bring their own pens we're inundated how can you let this happen kevin rudd has said you know he will take over the hospitals yeah. if they don't improve the buck stops don't with him he said the buck stops with him you, that's what he said don't you think it's time he made the decision we can't let this happen well what it's uh, australia what uh, of, of course uh, that's uh, unacceptable but what we saw uh, at the end of last year at COAG as a massive injection of federal funds uh, through the, the Council of Australian Where's Government process, putting money into hospitals. We've said, we've said that if they don't get their act together, then we would look at, well, uh, look at a federal takeover. Well, you know, it's been uh, just a, a couple of months uh, since that occurred. No, uh, we we want to we wanna work with, in the first instance, we want to work with state governments to make the system better. If the system doesn't get better, Very then we would look at a takeover. Yeah. We just, Anthony, we had this conversation with the former government. You know, we had Tony Abbott on this, talking about this years ago. And then we spoke to Kevin Rudd about this before he was Prime Minister. And now that you're in power, it's almost as though, I don't know, look, I'm a mum, you know, you give your kids, you count till three, sure. three strikes, you're out. It's like, how many chances do you keep giving before you sure. say... Well, You've gone too far, you're incompetent, we're going to do something. I, I, I want to put a bit, a bit of balance should be put in there there as well, which is that, you know, uh, certainly uh, my son was born in a, in a, in a public hospital. Uh, many hospitals are providing terrific services uh, for people. Uh, the people who work in those hospitals do, do great jobs. And uh, we, we do need to, to have a, a balanced approach. We're letting them down. But, but, you, you, but just, 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 just to come to, I can't believe I'm doing this, just to come to Anthony's aid, right, <laughs> at this particular moment, right? He, he is right about people working really hard. But that hospital yes. that you are referring to has had eight chief executives in 10 years. Eight chief executives yeah. in 10 years. How can you run any organisation? when the government okay. keeps changing the chief executive like that. Fair thing. Right. Can we... We'll send these emails to both of you. And yep. can you sure. pass them on to Malcolm and Kevin? Let's get some action here, and we're going to keep hounding you both on it. Guys, take no your worries. time. Thanks. Good See on you me. next week. See you.